All right. Uh, we are live with Alan from OMG talking about Ethereum Layer 2s and the roll-up future and, and what all is going on. How's it going, Alan? Good, good, good. How are you? I'm great. Uh, it's an early morning for me. Um, so, okay, let's, let's you know, I, I feel like the context here is actually fairly complex. Um, uh, uh, the OMG token has been uh, around for a while. Uh, it's, uh, it's been uh, 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 gone through a lot of changes over the years. Uh, you know, it's a 2017 era crypto asset. Um, and uh, there's sort of a new roadmap and a new vision. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about, you know, the history, how you got involved, uh, who you are, uh, you know, uh, as much as you could compress the data five, 10 minutes. Yeah, sure. No, ha happy to go through that. And, and thanks for having me here. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Alan Chu. I'm the CEO of Enya.ai. And uh, since earlier this year, around February, Enya uh, has become the core development partner of OMG. And what's going on with OMG, as, as Saki, you mentioned, uh, it's been around for a few years as a project. OMG launched Plasma mainnet last year. Um, and uh, the, the previous team had really tried to make Plasma sing and uh, work really well for use cases like enterprise payments and central bank digital currencies, but the, the traction just didn't, didn't come to Plasma. And uh, towards the end of last year, OMG was acquired by Genesis Block Ventures. And then subsequently, uh, we started partnering with o OMG to figure out, okay, what's next? And we felt that the original mission of OMG to scale Ethereum continues to be relevant, if, if not more so, with the rise of DeFi and NFT and so much demand coming to the Ethereum ecosystem. And so we thought, let's go back to, to our roots. Let's go back to what got OMG started in the first place. But this time, let's build a scaling solution that supports smart contracts, that, that actually serves the needs of developers and, uh, and also do so in a way that maximizes community involvement, developer involvement, and user involvement. And so that's what led us to creating OMGX, a whole new layer two solution that's a wholly uh, separate network from OMG Plasma. And uh, so what is OMGX? OMGX, first of all, is based on optimism. And we've been collaborating with the optimism team to, to make this happen. And um, we launched our, our mainnet, uh, excuse me, our test net on Rinkaby in, uh, in May. And we are uh, working very hard towards launching mainnet as soon as possible. Now, in addition to building on optimism, we added our own uh, take on, on what this layer two scaling solution looks like, what this optimistic rollup looks like. And uh, one of the first uh, uh, additions that we, that we implemented was our very own liquidity-based fast access solution, which actually might be very uh, interesting to liquidity providers out there. Um, and uh, another addition that we are adding to this optimistic rollup, OMGX, is the is what we call extensible smart contracts. It's the ability for smart contracts to invoke code that runs on web scale infrastructure like AWS Lambda endpoints and pull the results back into the smart contracts. And this opens up the possibilities for smart contracts to offload more compute intensive algorithms to AWS or other cloud infrastructure and um, not and not have to incur uh, super high gas fees, or sometimes even uh, algorithms that are impossible to be executed within a smart contract. And, and, and this hybrid model starts bridging the world of dApps with uh, the, the world of machine learning, secure computation, and other more advanced computing okay. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. areas. I want to I dig through like a bunch of, of like what I think are really like cool ideas here, but like are probably completely new to people. Okay. So, okay, so what, let's first ask the question, what is optimism? Uh, uh, you want, what, what is optimism uh, in sort of your words? Optimism is an optimistic roll-up, okay. which is one of the ways to scale Ethereum. Yep. 
it's a it, it's basic idea is is you publish the transactions on Ethereum, but you execute them on sort of a separate layer on a separate network. Um, so that's the core idea of, of optimistic rollups. And so um, there's a number of different optimistic rollups that have been built. Um, uh, the uh, the Arbitrum uh, 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 optimistic rollup has been getting a lot of excitement. Optimism is kind of also like a, a major player in space. Um, both offer sort of general smart contracts, solidity uh, uh, support, um, and these are sort of the uh, key pieces. And probably, you know, this is this is the um, uh, 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 Ethereum edition of DeFi Summer 2.0 uh, multi-chain edition is 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 the is the launch of all of these rollups and uh, the launch of DeFi on all of these rollups. Okay, so what you guys are. Uh, what you're building is a what you could almost describe as a I don't know I don't like um, it's an instance of optimism okay which I think the big idea that people um, you know maybe there's a the the idea is is that there's going to be like one arbitrum and one optimism um, and those are going to be the you know those are going to be the two competing layer twos and I think what what you guys are doing which is actually like just like a really important demonstration. Um, is that the uh, uh, um, is the uh, let's see the best way to say it is is that there's going to be more than one instance, right? Like optimism is going to have many flavors, and you guys have are really innovating on on another flavor of optimism. Exactly, ab absolutely, and this is this is going to be a, a real benefit to developers because we are still in the very very early days of scaling Ethereum. And uh, there, there are going to be many dif different design choices available to different teams that are scaling Ethereum, which means there are going to be different uh, design choices for de available to developers as well. Um, a monoculture, a, a singular way of scaling Ethereum, even within the realm of optimistic rollups, I think uh, would be limiting from an innovation perspective. Um, so I, um, we were excited that uh, there's so much uh, going on in the layer two space, we're happy uh, and uh, to to add our own flavors to it, and we, we also expect there will be other teams that will jump into the fray and you know take, have their own take on what it means to scale Ethereum and optimize maybe for for different design attributes. And all this means is there will be a lot of choices for developers to choose from, and you don't have to choose just one; you can be everywhere. And uh, and I think we will quickly find that all of these different uh, instances are all interoperable. Now, um, you know, I, I don't know how much you know about this, but you know, the 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 my interactions with OMG and pro the project go back all the way to you know 2017 era. Um, collaborated with them a lot. There was a you know there was a lot of attempts to try and figure out how OMG and Cosmos could work together. But in many ways, I feel like uh, your project, um, OMGX, is kind of like almost like the spiritual successor. Uh, and it's definitely like an intellectual successor. They're like these are the directions that uh, that like uh, Cosmos has always wanted to explore, which is, you know, a multi-chain ecosystem interoperating. Um, so you were talking about some of the stuff that you guys are doing. So, I mean, we can already see like what's what's unique about, you know, OMGX. One is, you know, just to begin with, like you talked about some software features, which I want to dig a little bit deeper into, but you also have, uh, you have a token, um, which uh, optimism does not, uh, or like the first instance of optimism and the first instance of, of Arbitrum. So, you know, uh, uh, what is, what is going to be the relationship between the OMG asset and, uh, and this network? Um, is there, is there anything you guys are ready to talk about yet? That's a very astute observation. The <laughs> OMG the, and the OMG token is one of the most widely held uh, tokens out there, uh, being held in in almost seven hundred thousand wallets. And we, what 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 we're really trying to do here is more than just building software. What we what we're creating is a community driven layer two solution, and the token will be critical to how uh, network upgrades and how this network will be governed and operated going forward. We have uh, 
we have already started uh, working on our plans to to transition OMG um, and the governance of OMG X into into a more decentralized model. Um, the specifics we'll announce the specifics when when the plans are uh, worked at uh, fleshed out and when we're, we're ready. But the the expectation is the token will be a key part of participating um, and driving participation in in the DAO that we're creating. And um, and let, let, let's be frank, marketing incentives also matter a lot in, in driving adoption and driving attracting I mean, users I think we've, and we've liquidity. Seen, we've seen Matic, like mm -hmm. what Matic has been able to, and Polygon have been able to do with to with their incentives, right? Um, yeah. And, uh, and you know, uh, uh, the... Uh, the it's it's gonna you know we've I, and I think that's a perfect demonstration of the power of a token um and and a community and like you know a token and and the community building aspects of it to really drive a lot of enthusiasm around a new layer two solution um so i think you guys are perfectly placed like honestly i think you know it's it's been it's been a crazy journey uh for for omg over the last few years but it, it does seem like you have you know, it, it does seem like there's a lot of strategic strength here. Um, and so that's really exciting. Um, why don't, you know, so we could talk a little bit about the liquidity solution. Um, one of the, uh, and what you guys are doing on that. So just to, to sort of structure the problem, um, the exit of assets from, um, an Ethereum layer two to another, to back to the Ethereum layer one, um, ha requires this window where, um, where so you know the way optimistic rollups, what makes them optimistic, um, is that there is the uh, there needs to be an opportunity to submit a fraud proof and have an invalid transaction, uh, an invalid state rolled back. Um, so, you know, let's say that, you know, the uh, 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 any instance of optimism, um, something uh, terrible happens um, and, you know, a transaction that's, that, you know, breaks the protocol rules, uh, steals a bunch of money, um, uh, gets gets committed in, you know, in, as an as a, in, you know, this is what we call an invalid state transition uh, or an irregular state transition. Um, and so you need a window of opportunity to submit this fraud proof that that proves that the state transition happened. Um, and what you're going, you know, so in order to have this window of opportunity, you have to wait um, as a as a user when you want to move your assets from the unoptimism instance back to the Ethereum L1. Um, and while you know direct uh, roll up to roll up uh, uh, interop is probably something that will come. Um, uh, you know, probably the best, the primary way people will interoperate between them in the early days will be, uh, through the Ethereum L1. Um, and given this constraint, you get your, you find yourself in this position of, um, where liquidity can sort of get, uh, can get locked up, um, waiting for, waiting for the opportunity, uh, to exit. So how are you guys going to make life easier for liquidity providers? Thanks for framing the problem. That's a very clear explanation. The way we are, so, so first of all, uh, the mechanism you described will be available in, in OMGX. In addition, we have set up liquidity pools on, on both layer one and layer two. And, and when you exit, when a user exit from OMGX back to, from uh, back to layer one, they have the option of going the fast exit route. And when they go, when they withdraw through that path, what happens is the, uh, the, the layer two liquidity pool uh, gets decremented and the layer one liquidity pool gets incremented. And so that's how they take the funds out. Now, uh, what that means is the liquidity providers uh, are, are bearing the risk of uh, potential invalid, potentially invalid transaction happening, and in return for bearing that risk, uh, the user withdrawing the funds will pay a convenience fee that will get shared amongst the liquidity providers. And in order to re retain um, uh, necessary balances in these liquidity pools, there's going to be a corresponding swap on mechanism um, where the 
uh, liquidity pools will get re rebalanced and replenished. And um, we're, we're working on mechanisms to also provide incentives to attract liquidity to, uh, to both sides. And, um, and how these fees are going to be uh, determined uh, initially is going to be determined by, by us, by our team. But over time, we'll turn these decisions over to, to the DAO, to the governance, and let the community decide what makes the most sense. And this is, I think, going to be really exciting. Um, yeah, I think it's, I, it, uh, you know, I think like one of the big sort of race conditions in, uh, in the design of blockchain protocols right now is uh, uh, sort of an economic mechanism, like what you described versus, uh, and so, you know, the whole thing is that, you know, you can be a liquidity provider of, uh, uh, of um, into that pool at near zero risk because anyone can validate um, the optimism chain, right? Uh, anyone mm -hmm. can validate the optimism chain. And if they see an invalid state transition, they can pull their liquidity. Um, so, you know, the, uh, uh, the, uh, um, this, the, 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 the risk that, and in, in sort of a fully rational world, the, the, uh, uh, the fees associated with taking on that risk should be minimal. Um, it's just simply the cost of capital. Um, and the, uh, the, uh, the sort of risk-free cost of capital and shouldn't be that big a deal. Uh, on the other hand, we have uh, all of the folks building zero knowledge roll-ups um, and using validity proofs who don't have this exit time and they're using a cryptographic mechanism um, uh, as zero knowledge proof. Uh, to to prove that their blocks are all valid, um, and I think it's going to be a really interesting race between these two systems. Um, uh, I also think it's yeah, I think it's really exciting that you guys are uh, uh, that you guys are deploying um, uh, a liquidity pool mechanism. And yes, I think this will be um, this is likely to become a a, a nearly a, a very low cost way for people to uh, for people to participate. Yeah, I, and. Uh, you know, I think that uh, uh, I can see a thing like a sommelier managed, uh, I could see something like a sommelier managed uh, liquidity pool into this exit pool um, because the sommelier validators, for instance, could could run their own, uh, could could sort of offload that work of, of validating the OMGX chain uh, and ensuring that, you know, there's zero, there, that, that, that the risks are actually there and taking action if an invalid block actually happens. Um, we would love to see that happen. Yeah, I mean, I think these things are these. This is the future of uh, of of the multi chain of the inner chain, uh, and it's really exciting to see it all starting to come to life. Um, that's fantastic. Um, so maybe you could tell us, you know, what a little bit about what the what your sense of the timing is um, over the summer. I, I would say that, like in general, like the the general timeline for both. Arbitrum and optimism has been a little, you know, so like they're both, both Arbitrum and optimism's like sort of uh, first instance uh, have been in, uh, in sort of uh, gated uh, main nets, uh, gated main net deployment now for probably almost a month now. Um, and uh, it's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's, it's, it's sort of, what is your sense of, of how this timeline is going to unfold? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And uh, first of all, this stuff is hard. Um, <laughs> oh, it's so hard. <laughs> it is so hard, right? We've got some of the smartest people on the planet working on solving these problems for years. And finally, we're getting very, very close to, to seeing these mainnets go live. But, you know, at but still, it's, it's hard to predict schedules. There have been delays, no doubt about that. Um, and and um, so, first of all, we have a ton of respect for for the optimism and Arbitrum team. In terms of in terms of timing, um, I really don't want to jinx how how quickly we can launch because um, it almost seems like every time a team announces a, a, a target date, they miss it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So I, I don't want to jinx our team. Uh, but what uh, what I can say is I'm super excited. Like every day, every week, when I see updates coming from our engineering team, it's like it they're making incredible progress right so um and you mentioned earlier you know this is uh almost like ethereum DeFi summer 2.0 because layer twos are coming out so pardon the pun i'm optimistic 
that we'll be able to get something out um, during the summer. But you know, my fingers have been I've been crossing my fingers for a long time. Uh, yep. I'm a string in my fingers now. Uh, but you know, I, I just 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 recognizing that we're solving some really difficult engineering problems and the teams are working yeah. so hard. So I, mean, I don't want to fix timeline on that. What I think is very um, what I think is very exciting about, you know, so you know, uh, uh, Sommelier is a Ethereum focused project and we're focused on Ethereum and its layers twos. Uh, but you know, still have my hands in Cosmos. Um, and I'm, I am somewhat thing of a multi-chain maximalist, um, in the sense that I've always believed that there would be many blockchains. Um, and I sort of, I sort of, uh, uh, am excited about sort of De like this, this instance of DeFi summer 2.0, just because, you know, what we've learned from De DeFi summer 1.0 is that, you know, the launch of DeFi on, you know, in most ecosystems definitely brings an increased level of activity and increased level of community engagement, um, a lot more things to do with your assets. Um, uh, you know, in Cosmos, we've had uh, the Osmosis chain launching. Next week, we have the, uh, we have the Gravity Dex on the Cosmos Hub launching. Uh, the Solana ecosystem is having, you know, a massive amount of DeFi sort of stuff built on it. And it's just sort of, it's sort of interesting to me um, and yeah, I, I, you know, again, I think what I think is utterly fascinating here is, is that you have an instance that sort of does has a native asset and an instance that, that doesn't have a, a native asset uh, uh, launching. And, you know, we're going to see, we're going to see how those, how that battle plays out. Um, you know, if, uh, if the Matic experience is any indication um, having a native asset is going to be an enormous, um, and basically, and like having a native asset and the, the willingness to sort of be aggressive, um, is going to make all the difference in sort of terms of community adoption. Um, absolutely so agree. Um, okay. I have some questions. Um, one, the, the other question that's been coming from the team is, uh, do you have any hints on how many projects will 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 be on OMGX uh, when it launches? Yeah, no, we've we've been asked that question a lot because folks really want to get a sense of how much traction we're getting. Um, uh, we we want to let the, the teams control when they announce. And um, you know, having spent enough time in my career in sales, you also don't don't count your deals until yep. until the money is in the bank, so to speak. So I would only like. I only feel 100% confident the team is launching after they've launched. Um, so, uh, but uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I, I will also give you just like sort of my battle experience with this, which is, um, you know, it depends, you know, it's all, every, you know, everything like we are in the blockchain space, we are not financial capital constrained, really. We are, a, we are human, we are like human capital and just the time it takes to write software. Like there's, you know, software is definitely a thing that I'm sure you're experienced is like, no matter how much money you have, there's only, you can only make it go so fast. Um, uh, engineering is hard. Building safety critical systems is hard. Um, but the, what I would say is, is that like generally you set, you know, uh, 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 I, I think traction is tends to be overestimated in the space just because everything is so early and switching costs tend to be low. Um, uh, like switching ecosystems, switching, uh, switching optimism chains, which are all, are all not going to be terribly expensive, which is one of the things that makes DeFi, I think, so uh, unstoppable, right? Is that like, something can go wrong with any number of chains, instances, uh, versions of things, but we always have somewhere, like there's always somewhere else to go. Um, and I think it's, it, it's difficult to fight a, a, a war against a multi-headed hydro like that. Oh yeah, totally agree. Capital is like 
it's like water. It's just so it it so, can so easily flow from one chain to another. And I totally agree. I'm on on the same page with you. And in, in in the way we look at the blockchain world, it's absolutely going to be a multi chain world uh, with solutions like Somali that that facilitates that makes it so much easier for for DeFi users to actually benefit from a multi chain world. Um, so this is all goodness for developers for users and. You know, and, and I think sometimes also uh, folks may overemphasize the number of projects on, on a particular network. I think what matters more is, is the number of quality projects that are going to be available on a network, not the, to not the quantity. And, um, and, and because what, what matters is ultimately how many people are using these protocols and how much liquidity is going to be attracted to the network. And if you have 100 shitty projects, it's not nearly as good as having 10 high quality projects. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it takes an enormous amount of attention uh, from the team onboarding those projects, uh, helping them uh, uh, get spun up. Absolutely. And, you know, you got to manage resources. So, yeah. uh, no, it's, I think it's really exciting. Uh, this has been fantastic. I think I've learned a lot. You know, when, when I saw that uh, OMG was, uh, was, uh, was building on top of, uh, of optimism, I, I was like, I, I thought it was quite surprising. Um, uh, I thought it was quite surprising, but I also thought quite good. Um, and I think that there is uh, a lot to be excited about uh, coming up. And uh, so uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. I love your framing of us being the intellectual and spiritual successor of the original vision and can't wait to make that real. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Bye, guys. Yeah, bye. Thanks.